Okay, I'm going to do something that I don't typically do. I'm going to combine the LFO and the envelope into one video because, to be honest, uh, it should be relatively quick to outline what's going on with them. And in some ways, I've already demonstrated them. And so I'm just going to go through them really quickly. We have uh, an AD slash R um, envelope, which is very straightforward. One of the great benefits, again, of the synthesizer is you get to see the shape of your envelope as you're setting it. So not only do you get the aural feedback, but you also get the visual feedback. And you have the benefit of it telling you exactly how long the attack or the release actually is, or decay. So often, not so much with this synthesizer, I usually just demonstrate with the sustain up, which just gives you an on off amp setting. But you can definitely see the envelope shape. And the filter amount here, which is part of the filter and not part of the envelope. Um, so we, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, really important, you'll see that there is this amp mod button on, which is an interesting thing because it's telling you the envelope is uh, modulating the amp. And that's typically what happens, but we don't usually think of it that way. But that is literally what's happening in most synthesizers whenever you have, you know, the envelope uh, that, affects the amp it is the envelope modulating the amp in the same way that it would modulate the filter so we can turn that off and then we get we actually get the same outcome as if we just had the sustain uh, put up which is a gate going directly to the amp so the gate opens when you press a key and the gate closes when you let go of a key in addition to being just a useful amp setting, uh, this is also an opportunity for you to direct the envelope uh, entirely to the filter without it affecting the amp, which um, you know allows you to do a number of filter-related things without the like having a slow attack on the amp, etc. So in this way, we'll we actually can use the filter amount here. So if you have a sound where um, at the end you go down entirely into silence, you don't even hear that the amp is actually just an on-off situation. I'm still holding the key. So the gate is still open to the amp, but the filter has cut off all of the sound. So uh, that's a little distinction that's been popular in synthesizers for many, many years. But here it is right in the Archeria Microfreak. Okay, next, let's go straight into the LFO. Now the LFO doesn't do anything unless you connect it to something via the matrix. And uh, just for, again, clarity, just like we did with the cycling envelope, I'm gonna direct it to pitch. All right. Eventually, okay. So we can hear this. Um, here we go. Currently we have it set to a sine wave and that's what you're hearing. And of course we can control the rate. Now the rate has a variety of functions. You might've noticed me just turning the sync off. We'll get to that. But uh, you also get to see the frequency of the LFO when you adjust it. It tells you, it tells you the frequency and it actually extends the sine wave to show you how slow the frequency can be. And then of course, if we turn it up, it actually goes into the audio range, although not far. Theoretically, I wonder 
if you modulated it with the keyboard, if you could get actual frequencies. Well, I guess we could. Are we really going to do that? <sighs> okay. We don't have time. Mark, we don't have time. How much time? Uh, only Actually, we do have time. Okay, I'm doing it. So let's go to assignment number one, and we'll turn this, uh, that to the right. Then we'll come down here to the keyboard, and we'll choose that. We'll turn it up to 100%, and we'll see if we can get the LFO to be a tone source. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> uh, still, it's a cool effect. Okay. Let's go back to what our setting was, where we had the LFO, controlling the pitch. Okay, we have the sine wave. We have a triangle wave. We have a sawtooth wave. What I would typically call a ramp wave because it's going in that direction, which is often the modulation shape of a wave. Uh, we have the square wave. We have, uh, oops, sample and hold. And what's really cool is that because we have audio range frequency on this thing, we can turn the sample and hold so far up that it actually becomes kind of noise-like. Now, if you use this as a modulation to a number of things other than sound, you'll get the potential for having a sort of noise type sound. And we have lagged sample and hold. Although, with that waveform, it kind of doesn't look like that. It just looks like noise in general. But it is lagged sample and hold so that the hard edges of the different steps are they have lag or sort of a, I guess the same thing as portamento. Once again, sped up, you get what amounts to a sort of low level noise. So this encoder is also a button. So if you press the button, you have the LFO synced and you can sync it to um, your sequencer or your arpeggiator. And you can see the different note values. You can get you know, half notes, whole notes, triplets, quarter notes, triplets, etc., up to 30 second notes and uh, single eighth notes and single half notes, etc. cetera. So, uh, I guess we'll find out what the tempo is set to. What? No, 30 second no triplets. Um, okay. So uh, you can definitely hear that. And that helps you... Uh, sync your the changes in your LFO to whatever you have going on in the uh, arpeggiator and sequencer so that your LFO is matching tempo wise what's happening in those. Also, if you want to set this LFO so it starts restarts with every single note press or every single you know trigger from one of these automated things, you can go into the utilities and set it to do that. So that is our envelope and our LFO on the Archeria Microfreak. <laughs>